Hello guys, are we live yet? Let's see. I mean, I should be live anytime now. So assuming that I have gone live, let's start. So yesterday we did not have the episode. Sorry about that. Uh, had, I don't know, probably vaccine side effects or something. So let's get on with the, you know, analysis for today. And let's just uh, focus on one thing at a time. And let's get on with it. Okay. I, we have one watcher so far, which means we are live. You can hear me, right? Social comments take a little bit of time to come in, which is weird. Okay, so so last time we had an analysis was third June, and on third June, our uh, you know basic read was uh, it's a new all-time high, supported fifty five hundred, not a shorting market for every dip you can buy. That's playing exactly what it is like. We had bullish bias, we had PCR bullish, we had FIA by bullish, we had. Categorically stated, there's no point in shorting the market. Market is bullish, no resistance. Happy to short 1500 and below cup puts. We will be buying calls. A thought at the right entry. Probably that right entry was somewhere around here or maybe here. And you have made money even if you bought calls. So basically, this is you know just about take any trade in the direction of an upward trending Nifty market. So uh, fairly easy market to trade in a matter of speaking that all you have to do is sell puts or buy calls or buy futures very clear direction till something else tells us you know what everybody needs to take a chill pill and reevaluate priorities okay so we have slightly lower viewership today for some reason probably it's because we went after hindi uh, but anyway uh, so let's look at uh, so the chart very categorical <coughs> The chart is indeed saying that, you know, everybody, uh, please don't short. So I'm going to write exactly what we wrote on 3rd June. Nothing has changed, right? Because new all-time high support of 1500, not a shorting market for every day you can buy. That's what the chart is saying. Chart says no resistance, by the way, in the near term. Because why? Because this is an unexplored territory, right? Every time you're trying to predict that this is where the, you know, uh, top end is, you're basically gambling. Another way to look at this is maybe, maybe another way to look at this. You can think of shorter time frame, change, time frame uh, channels and all. But again, that's also a very premature way of looking at things for the simple reason that, look, all I know is that the market is in un unknown territory. Then why am I trying to predict the top? One thing you should never do in trading is try to predict something, right? So like it, it is very tempting to connect these dots or connect this and, and yaar, connect karne ko to, people can connect anything right Usme kya hai? right you can probably connect this and this and i don't know like i mean if you if you stare long enough there is a line everywhere but okay this, this is probably a channel you can connect. there could be some kind of dip it's a short time frame dip so i won't think that dip can go anywhere below 15700 because this is the channel getting formed in a shorter time frame which is a 15 minute time frame <laughs> but my my point very simply put is that even if I were to draw this channel, this is a short term channel and the long term trend is still bullish. So there is no point in betting against the long term trend. I would be look to buy on dips of this to go long for the, you know, uh, breakout. So don't chase the breakout. When you get a good opportunity to enter, enter it for a next up move. So I will probably watch this channel, this very nice channel. I'll buy every time it comes close to 15. Uh, Six, it, if it goes below 15,700 or 680 or something, I'll try to look to enter on the long side. That is the trade right now. No resist, no big resistance, only short term resistances, which are likely to be taken out in the long time time frame. Now let us look at open interest. Open interest is very interesting. Today was categorically people saying, boss, I don't want to be in 15,700 call. Look at the unwind, right? Almost a million and addition of put almost a million and a half. So we know for a fact that we getting out of apparently Hindi session. I thought the Hindi session is over. Is it going on even now? Sorry, somebody is saying apparently Hindi session is going. I don't think it's, I thought it's over. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, I'll be very embarrassed if it's still going on. I'm so sorry. Let me just check if it's still on. It's over, right? Yeah, yeah, correct. Um, 
whistle sound yes i happen to you know, live in a house and <laughs> there is stuff happening here but anyway uh, coming back to the point so this is now the intraday sorry the days option chain the days option chain very clearly says that uh, there are positions here and then there are call additions here so one thing for fact we know is that 1500 and below has a lot of put standing but you have to be careful here because 15800 is not very low in terms of calls this is heavy calls this is heavy calls this is heavy call so option chain properly shows proper tug of war happening so one thing i had realized here is this call and winding and put at 15700 but the option chain on calls above 15700 is strong now let us look at it in conjunction with the chart right this chart if this is true actually holds that story because this is in an upward trending channel right now there is no immediate possibility of a breakout here right and this is somewhere around 15800 levels so 15800 can act as a resist in fact right i would even say 15800 plus is a resistance that is only for the shorter time frame so there are shorter time frame resistances there is no long time frame resistance very important to separate time frame pcr is i'll be very surprised if it is not bullish but let me just yeah 1.2 high fi option data let me just see what the data is data is more puts than calls but daily activity more calls than puts so overall it is mixed signals because daily it is bullish monthly it is bearish <laughs> now fii futures data mildly positive and fii stock data is kind of negative but it's neutral right 200 crores is nothing so what is the verdict see it is very tempting to say 15700 to 16000 is the expiry it is a safe bet right safe bet <clears throat> in fact i'll just elaborate it and i'll put 15600 to 16000 is a safe bet of expiry why because i'm combining two things this upward trending channel <clears throat> and this option chain put together tells me that 600 to 16000 for sure looks like a range but if i were to be a little bit more aggressive what i'll do is i'll take this channel right this channel which is looking like this and i might want to put a conclusion that there is a low probability of breaking 15800 in this expiry why because this channel is still intact maybe it will go up like this and break out but when it breaks out we'll see but as of now there's a channel here and um aggressive bet sub 15800 expiry so my aggressive bet is 15600 to 15800 expiry so depending on the premium you can bet on either of this so what are my trades my trades are i can do 15700 or below puts in fact i'll be more comfortable below i can do 15600 15600000 strangle i can do 15700 16000 strangle if you feel you know thoda sa or daring you can probably even deploy 15600 15800 strangle right or you can do iron condors also if you want to bring down the margin uh, so basically right 15600 to so the aggressive range is 600 to 16000 sorry 600 to 800 the safe range is 600 to 16000 i'll do one of these two strangles i'll be more comfortable doing this strangle though like the 700 600 uh this is not a in this short time frame at least it is not an obvious call uh, put shorting market because we are going to encounter some heavy resistances here and we are going to run, running out of a little bit of steam here 
so that is my analysis on nifty moving to bank nifty wow this is interesting bank nifty is giving a paper umbrella today on the futures chart on the spot chart though sorry this is bank oh this is interesting so remember we talked about this other line which we could have drawn earlier this is taking some resistance here so this is the support line this 35 200 line is a support line this is the resistance line so i'll be looking to see a clear move here there is a bearish engulfing sort of candle formed here there is a harami candle formed here bank nifty is difficult to call i'll definitely definitely think that there's a support here but what is worrying me why is that support not pushing things up already lol one second <laughs> I, I just I'll just, go back. I'll just close the door. I'm so sorry. My God, I can start a power plant in my home with all that steam. So, so, so Bank Nifty is yeah. It is true that Bank Nifty is kind of weak. We'll ex examine why because. If this is indeed a support, why is there no, no strong price action rejection every time it is consolidating near support is a legitimate question to ask. Also, remember, we had drawn a line earlier here. It's not breaking that line. This seems like a resistance forming. So I'll not be very bullish on Bank Nifty looking at the overall pattern. But the fact is that weekly closing was above 35,200, which is a support. So do I short Bank Nifty? No, I'll probably short Bank Nifty if I get it below this range, which is 35,200 with a strong price action negative candle. If I see it here, it is still a buy, not a sell. But if I get it here, it is probably a short simply because Bank Nifty has run out of steam. So watch out for this level. If it breaks this level, it can go all the way to 34, you know, 33,800 or 34,000 levels. So thoda careful with Bank Nifty. Dollar finally meanwhile we saw this we had drawn this resistance level here <clears throat> it has come down from there and it is still encountering some heavy selling there but this is a base to watch out for i think i personally think this is a good opportunity to probably enter along with a tight stop loss on the dollar okay let's quickly see if there are any questions Ankit is asking, are you sure you're using the correct Nifty chart? Am I not using the correct Nifty chart? How can I get Nifty chart wrong here? Nifty chart is Nifty chart. Yeah, yeah, this is Nifty chart here. Uh, okay, there is a rising wedge, which Rakesh is saying there's a rising wedge, which is a big risk in Nifty. Let's see where is the rising wedge. Where is the rising wedge? I don't see the rising wedge. Okay. Probably it is there and I'm not seeing it. <clears throat> okay. So that was our analysis for today. Uh, SGX is trading at 15, 17, 800, which just means that it is 20 points, 15, 800, right? It is just 20 points, which is hardly anything to care about. And we all know SDX thoda wave of fato hai. So anyway, guys, this was our analysis for today. Uh, somebody is asking a great question. Uh, VIX is low. Should we buy or sell options? So <clears throat> let's answer that question with the gravitas it deserves. Open interest option chain. Let's just look at the IV. Okay, so I, I'll, I'll answer that question because it's a very good question to answer. So ATM IV is 14 half. IV percentage percentile is 4, which is very low. So what will happen if the market goes up is that IV can fall further. And if you have bought options, uh, IV will fall to thoda sa you lose, you know, uh, on Vega, but you'll gain a lot on Delta. But if you buy puts and it falls a little bit, the IV can also go up. So you'll make money on both sides. So should you buy options? Uh, 
if VIX is low, if ATM IV is low, you can actually buy options. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not like you have to perennially sell options. This entire, you know, always sell options and you will make money is thought as a guess. This is a time if you have a good directional bias and if you have a very strong entry, which gives you a reasonably big, big range, you can absolutely buy options here, right? If I were to get a price below 15,700 and I think the target is 15,800, I'll probably buy an option for that. I don't mind buying a 15,700 ATM for a 150 point move if the price is right. And if the, if I realize that this is going to turn around also, if you don't, if you believe in this, you know, uh, theory, which I'm saying that 15,800 can have some resistance. There's nothing wrong with buying a 15,800 put also for the simple reason that, you know, uh, if Nifty falls, you'll gain a little bit on IV, you'll gain Delta. So there's nothing wrong. So IV is long, IV is low, which means that if you find a reasonable 150, 200 point range, there's nothing wrong with buying options for a quick in out, but the range is tight. So if it stays there, you will lose money on the premium. Uh, one last question, uh, Bhushan is asking, what do you think about uh, adjustments in option? Your very tricky business. Adjustment is in a way a stop loss, but then if you're doing stop loss, why don't you stop loss, right? Because, uh, okay, adjustment is a horrible idea in a unidirectionally trending market. Uh, it's a very bad idea in a unidirectionally trending market, but in a range bound market, it's a reasonably okayish idea. Also, <clears throat> very difficult for people to mentally get out of stop loss. So adjustment kind of makes you do stop loss without really stopping doing stop loss. <clears throat> so yeah, that is our analysis for today. 17 minutes. Thanks guys again for joining. You guys have a great uh, trade tomorrow. Like we said before, don't trade for the sake of trading. If you don't feel like trading tomorrow, don't trade. Uh, and keep your capital safe. These are not recommendations. I'm not asking you to trade. I don't have any of these trades. These are just, uh, we are doing this just so that people figure out how to analyze the market and that's our only intent. No trading recommendations, absolutely whatsoever. Uh, so thanks again for joining guys. You have a great day. Bye.